What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Lost Tangent Outpost. My name is Spada, and welcome back to another episode of the Multiverse's Living Roster, episode four, and we're still going strong. I gotta say thank you to all the support and participation. But before I get carried away, I gotta give the newcomers an explanation for what the Living Roster is. The Living Roster is an ever-changing, ever-evolving, community-driven prediction hosted by me, and the objective is to try and correctly predict the roster for a fighting game. Over the course of an episode, we will cover where the Living Roster currently stands as a result of the last episode's polling, and then we'll talk about the prediction we're making in this one. I'll have you all take a poll based on the information I provide as to who I think is the most reasonable character to include, or property to be represented. I hope this makes sense, but let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm sure you noticed Ben 10 on today's thumbnail, and that's because we're talking about the Cartoon Network shows out of the odds. And I can't wait to discuss those, and I know there's a lot of fervor from you all to get at least one of these characters in, but before we can get to that, let's talk about the results of last week's ep- Oh, shit. I forgot. We had a bonus episode a week or two ago. There's no way I can go over the results of last week without at least covering the results of the bonus episode. So let's start there. Between episodes two and three, I posted a bonus episode where I asked you all to help me determine if we felt like the original NRS leak, that is the NetherRealm Studios leak that, that started all of the multiverses speculation to begin with, should be used in our living roster. In that original leak, there were five characters characters talked about that haven't yet been confirmed. Fred Flintstone, Johnny Bravo, Mad Max, and then the two Harry Potter characters, Harry and Ron Weasley. I asked you all to help me decide if we should include these characters, explaining that Harry and Ron seem tentative for now, but the other three seem pretty straightforwardly obvious. And though we didn't get as many people voting in that poll as I would have liked, the results still aligned with my point made in the video, at least based on the poll results and the comments left on that video that we should include them, but not the Harry Potter characters. So with that, let's go ahead and bring those in. Starting with our big boy Fred Flintstone, followed by the wannabe ladies man Johnny Bravo, and finishing up with the post-apocalyptic hero, Mad Max. All right, I like how we're looking. As you guys can see, I've taken the liberty of deciding a class for each character. Now these are just placeholders, so get involved in the comments and let me know what class you think they should be. Okay, now we can talk about the results of episode 3. In this episode, we talked about WB Pictures properties. I provided what I felt were five of the most likely candidates, and without a doubt, this is the episode that has had the most diverse set of results. And quite a few of you did bring up some issues with Godzilla and the mask's inclusion, given the ownership of those characters is not squarely in the hands of Warner Brothers. After doing some further research and looking into statements about second party characters from the developers, I've decided that I'm okay with having these characters included still. They may be a bit harder for the devs to get a hold of, but given that they have such a legacy with Warner Brothers, it makes sense to me that they're still plausible inclusion. But in either case, this poll had a pretty decent turnout given the votes to view count ratio. So I gotta say thank you to all of you for participating and let's keep getting involved, liking the video, sharing and all that stuff so we can get as many votes as possible on today's video and all the future ones. With all of that said, the results of episode three appear as such. Even though there were way more diverse votes, it seems like most people were still aligned with my perspective that the Matrix was the most likely out of the five to appear in the game at launch, making the Matrix and by proxy Neo, the winner of this poll. Let's give Neo his new spot. And just like that, we only have four spots left. Only four. That's going to make the next few episodes rather tight because we'll want to be super choosy about who we select. And on that note, let's go ahead and get started on the options for today's poll. So as I mentioned earlier, today's family of WB properties is coming from Cartoon Network's 2000 era which includes a lot of fan favorites. Now, my selection process for this was a little hard. I was just aging out of Cartoon Network at this time, so a lot of these shows I do not have a ton of familiarity with. As a result, I'm really going to need y'all's help in figuring this out. Now, I've selected five shows, and hopefully they're the ones that you all agree are most likely, but if I make a mistake here, try not to be too hard on me and just let me know down in the comments. Let's go ahead and get to it. The first cartoon I'm gonna bring up is The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack. This might be the least likely to be included from this list, but I picked it because even though I was super unfamiliar with it at the time, I had at least seen it and the art style was super recognizable, particularly the way that they handle textures and patterns. But as a show about a pirate kid who's obsessed with candy, I think there are several ways that he could be utilized in a game like this. And given how often the art style seemed to sway between animation, stop motion, and a few other mediums, I think it'd be interesting to see this character brought to life in a game like Multiverses. The next show we're talking about 
is The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. As with the last one, my familiarity with this series is mostly passing, so including them here is mostly based on what I think is its popularity is. I don't have a ton of knowledge about the series itself, so it's hard exactly to know how this would work, but after the research I've done, it seems that Mandy is the one that tends to make the big decisions on the show. She likes to boss around Grim, and she's very possessive of her relationship with Billy. It seems to me that she would be the representative from this show. I think you could have her attack supplemented by appearances of the other two, making sure that all three titular characters get their time Time to shine without taking away from the authenticity of the characters themselves. Then there's Codename Kids Next Door, a show that follows five spy kids, each with their own distinct strengths and personalities. Thinking about how this show could appear in a game like Multiverses, I feel like what makes the most sense is to have something like the Pokemon Trainer from Smash, where you start as, say, number one, and then can switch between the rest of them as you play, each having their own moveset and capabilities, but sharing some general gameplay elements or even attacks. Given the show's nature, there is plenty of action in the show to pull from and plenty of opportunities to make attacks and specials. So I think this one is fairly straightforward and would excite a lot of fans of the series. Now these last two are the ones I'm most familiar with. So let's start out with Samurai Jack. This one doesn't need much of an introduction and I know everyone is already expecting this character to show up. He even recently appeared in the data mine leak so it may not even be worth discussing the other four properties. But either way, Jack is an iconic character for anyone that's a fan of animation. With its ability to portray the dynamic action in a familiar style and still keep an element of fun, the show has maintained its popularity for very good reason. I think there's no limit to the things and abilities that he'd have influenced his moveset from both the older show and the more recent version that aired a couple years ago. And lastly is Ben 10. Now this one, again, I aged out of. But my son has been a huge Ben 10 fan. He even made his own Omnitrix out of notebook paper and construction paper when he was like four, which was quickly then ruined by his baby sister, and we ended up buying him the best one that we could find on the internet a week later. This show's protagonist, Ben, is very friendly to being adapted into a fighting game. He's got 10 forms to start with, but as I understand it, he ends up gaining many, many more over the course of the show. Each form brings out a part of Ben's personality, alters his voice, and gives him a whole new set of powers. If there was any character that was made to be in a platform fighter, it'd have to be Ben 10. All right, and with that, here's your poll. Which 2000s Cartoon Network property is most likely to be represented in multiverses? The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Codename Kids Next Door, Samurai Jack, or Ben 10. In previous episodes, I've given you all three places to go vote, but this time, I'm gonna give you two. The first place is most easily accessed by subscribing to the channel and visiting our community page. There, you'll see a poll at the very top pertaining to the episode. And the second would be a custom poll made on a website called Straw Poll, the link to which will be provided in the description of this video and at the top of this video pinned in the comment section. Now, I do wanna make sure that I mention that two of these shows, technically three, are considered cartoon cartoon shows, a set of franchises that I'm really looking forward to covering. However, I included them here because they came into production in the 2000s and seem to be popular requests that I've seen on Reddit and Discord. Don't fret, I still do plan on doing a cartoon cartoon episode soon, and this would cover shows like Courage the Cowardly Dog, Dexter's Lab, and so on. But with that, everyone, I'm gonna call that an episode. I appreciate every single one of you for your support and your contributions. Please make sure to like the video if you haven't already, subscribe so that you can see the next episode when it goes live, and get involved in the comments. Let me know what you think of my picks today. Tell me if you think I got something wrong. Anything and everything helps the show improve and the community grow. Thank you all, and until next time.